G'day everybody, how are you going today? It is so good to see you. Today in this episode, I wanna talk about something that I think is really important to absolutely every single photographer and filmmaker. And it's something super simple, but critical. And that is, what are you doing when you're looking through your EVF? What are some of the absolute basics to ensure that you are getting the best frame to begin with? And it doesn't matter which camera you're using. You could be using something like this, a little Canon pocket camera. Or you could be using something like this, a beautiful Hasselblad medium format. Look at the size of this glass, absolutely enormous. Or it could be cameras like this one here, the Sony a7R 3 or the Nikon Z50. Even so, all of these cameras have different sensor sizes. We live within the confines of our frame. This is both a glorious thing and some may find it a difficult thing. I personally absolutely love the frame and the power to edit the world that it gives me. And I think right there, that is absolutely the critical thing. The frame that we have, this frame around us right here, allows me to frame out, for example, a car that I don't like the look of, or a bright fluoro witch's hat that I don't like the look of. Or perhaps I'm trying to make out that this is an old world image, but right just out of the side of frame, there's a brand new modern building or something of that order. The frame is all powerful and it is absolutely, from my perspective, the most important thing we do. Light obviously is critical, but often light is like the light today. Here it is, it's on, it's doing its thing. We can't control it that much. The frame, we can control absolutely. And obviously we do this with lots of different ways. One of the most obvious ways we change the frame is by walking around and the frame absolutely changes. Another way we change the frame is to swing our camera left and right, up and down, and of course, a technological way that we change the frame is to zoom. If you have a 24 to 200 mil lens, you are changing the frame so significantly, it's not funny. And another way that photographers love to change the frame is also to crop. Now, because I'm very much from the film days and I used to shoot exactly the same sort of images that I shoot now, I used to shoot on 400 ISO, ASA film, even 3200 film. And cropping was something that wasn't really that successful. The penalty for cropping was actually quite high because 35 millimeter film at 400 or 3200 ISO was pretty grainy and you couldn't crop too much. So I very much taught myself to ensure that the frame was what I wanted it to be. So that gets us to what am I looking for and what am I looking at when I'm looking through my OVF or my EVF through that beautiful frame, what am I doing to ensure that I'm getting what I want? Well, the very first thing that I do when I'm attracted to a scene is I've seen something. I've seen something out there in the world. It might be a perspective, it might be texture, it might be color. So the very first thing I do is check the frame for anything that doesn't fit the story of what I've seen. Got to make sure that that is out of the frame. And for example, I've often said, and here comes a cloud, the lighting is going to change. I've often said that I don't like cars because cars often date things. Now, obviously there are some cars that are timeless and beautiful and fit outside of that parameter, but the majority of modern cars just simply date and place images too significantly. Because of that, I try and keep cars to a minimum. If cars are there, they're a blur or they're a shadow, they're just hard to define. There are so many elements within the frame that you've just got to decide from an editorial perspective. Does it fit the mood? Does it fit the message? Does it distract? It could well be that you've got absolutely the very best frame, the greatest frame, but there's something in it that just really clashes with your message and thus the image doesn't work out. And it might only be a very, very small part of the image. You know, it might only be not even 1% much less than 1%, but you've got this modern bin making this fantastic image just not work. Now, in those sort of situations, I'm a complete advocate that you saw something 
and there's this thing right in the middle of the shot that just destroys it so you can absolutely remove it photoshop that thing out i am fine with removing something so small which absolutely changes an awesome image let's look at an example of that here we are in the backyard of the National Gallery of Victoria, looking at the beautiful vista of the Art Centre Spire, looking towards the city on a beautiful foggy day. Now, I love the serenity and calmness of this image. And in the end, I found a man taking off his jacket and a family having a picnic and a pram distracting and took away from the serenity. But I did leave one lone figure in there that really helps provide a sense of scale which i think is really important in these sort of images then you really understand how large these objects are when looking at the frame it's all about looking for distractions things that don't actually fit your story and your message and what that absolutely means as i'm composing an image is i am looking i've actually cast my eye around the border of the frame and i just check i just literally do like a double check that everything I want is in there is in there and everything that I don't want is out. And that might mean a slight adjustment, left or right, up or down. And another thing I'm very much trying to do in this day and age is actually, and it's not possible in all cases, is to keep my frame level. Because as soon as you point up or down, your buildings will lean in as you point up and they'll go the other way as you point down. So I try to keep horizontal and look, that, that can create some difficulties because you might not have the correct lens to capture what you want. Then you've either got to make a choice to not get that shot or to tilt and sometimes you go with it and you just, you just really go for it and you really get that look. Or if it's minor, like you, the building is just a little bit off horizontal so you've got to lean a little bit, you can make the decision to fix that in post with keystoning. Just be aware, keystoning removes quite a lot of your image, so sometimes you've got to give a little bit of extra space around what you're shooting, and that changes very much on, on how hard you apply it. So the frame, it's, the, it's actually the most fundamental part of photography, this box that captures images of the world. It's its most critical aspect besides light gathering. You are in complete control, and I don't, I don't see AI ever taking over where we look, how we zoom, where we walk. And the reality is, if it ever did take over, well, I don't call that photography anymore. That's auto image making. And I don't want to do that. So framing, your most important tool. Choose your frame and I set you a challenge. Just try and take your images without cropping. Now, of course, there's times where you want to get something that's so far away and you just have to crop. But I'm just talking, not every single image, but in life, try and get that shot. Try and get your frame in camera. It's so exciting when what you saw is what you end up enjoying, what you end up loving, and you don't, you don't have to post-production the living life out of it. Now, in no way am I saying that's a bad thing. I'm just simply setting a challenge and a different way of thinking if that's not your current way of thinking. Try and get your frame in camera, see it in the moment. Do that frame check around the edges. And if you have to move, if you have to zoom, if you have to change lens even, then do it. You've got a 45 megapixel camera, you've got a 24 megapixel camera, you've got a 12 megapixel camera. We'll use all of those megapixels. So everybody, I'd love to know your thoughts on the power of the frame. Is it as important to you as it is to me? I'd love to know what you think about it. And it was actually one of the very first things that I realized about photography was the fact that we were editors on the fly with this frame. This image can mean something completely different from this image. And it can be as simple as that, just by editing one little thing out. So powerful, so important, don't forget it. So everybody, we're gonna give it a name today. We're gonna to call it the Edge Check. And please let me know in the comments below, is this something that you already do? Or this is something that I would love you to start to do, your edge checking. Fantastic to see you, as always. Look, if this is your first time here, I would love to see you again. So please do subscribe, please share, please like. It's absolutely fantastic for the video to get it out there. Please don't forget channel membership, just down there. And you can get yourself a hat or a t-shirt 
I'm adding more designs every week or so. So good to see you. Get yourself out there and do your edge check. Not your hedge check, but your edge check. Catch you later.